Yo, so guys, welcome back to another video. This is a space reaction. I don't know why it's been such a long time. Again, space videos are the most sort of eye-opening videos that I react to personally, and I find them just baffling. I don't know why I always go through phases of doing loads of reactions and moving to other subjects, and then sort of forgetting how much I enjoy these reactions, and then coming back, doing it, in, like just in like a cycle. But again, man, like I always say when I come back to it, please suggest some more, because again, Space videos are the ones for me that are the, the topics of videos for me, the topic of video for me, that just, it's just unexplainable the sort of feelings it gives me. And the video is real images from our solar system. Um, I always find it cool seeing like pictures taken from space. I'm going to sound really stupid here. As per usual, nothing's changed. But like, when they take pictures, is it like, do they send like an aircraft? It's 30 degrees Celsius in my room. 30 degrees. I'm sitting in a sauna right now. 30 degrees. Oh, jeez. Sorry, that took me off guard. I, I feel hot. I didn't know it was that hot. Um, Yeah, like, do they send, like, things into, like, what do they send into, what are they called? Like, what was I saying before? I forgot what I was saying before. What is it they, what do they send into space to take pictures? Like, the Perseverance um, rover thing. Is it things like that that take pictures of these things as as they go past them? I don't know even what I'm saying at this point. But yeah, please suggest some more space reactions. Sorry for this butchered intro. Um, we're going to get into this. Shout out to my Instagram, my Twitter. Links in the description for those interested. Same for my Patreon. Links all there for those interested. Suggest any kinds of videos from my Patreon. Some videos do get blocked. So again, the Patreon's good for videos that do get blocked. Maybe space videos that get blocked. Other sort of topics. Comedy videos, sports videos. Just anything, basically. Just a mixture of everything on there. But... Yeah, links are all there, but let's jump into this. Um, yeah, man, I'm excited to get into these space reactions again because they're so fun. They really are so fun for me to learn, learn through. Okay, these aren't real. No, not. Before modern telescopes, humans could only imagine what the surface. Oh, of it's telescopes. Wait, the what? sun. And I mean, I knew sun was from telescopes. And but... the planets look like. Now, advanced technology has made it possible to get in close and take images okay. of. I'm speaking too soon. Forget. Just, just let it go. Just let it go. The sun go. and the planets deep in our solar system. Now, get ready to see the solar system as you've never seen it before, and see images that were so good they shocked astronomers. These are gonna scare me, man. I swear, these space pictures really do scare me. Burning with the energy of a trillion nuclear bombs per second. The Sun is the largest body in our solar system, accounting for 99.86% of the total mass. One of the that most dramatic ridiculous. images of the Sun was captured by the Solar Dynamics Observatory on August the 31st, 2012, when a long filament of solar material that had been hovering in the Sun's atmosphere erupted really. into outer space. This beautiful but deadly coronal mass ejection see Is this real? This is not real, man. This is not what the sun actually looks like. And like, wait, I'm baffled right now. This is, this, this looks like Eddie. Yeah, me. Like... Traveled at over 900 miles per second. The planet closest to the sun, orbiting at an average distance of 36 million miles, Mercury, has been studied by many spacecraft throughout the years. But NASA's Messenger spacecraft was the first to orbit the planet. Space Images showed the surface covered in craters in all sizes and massive asteroid impact sites like the Van Eyck Crater, which is 168 miles in diameter, and the Caloris Basin, which is 960 miles in diameter, with mountains at the outer rim 1.2 miles high. These are images with spectral surface measurements that were taken on April the 29th, 2015. Messenger snapped more than 200,000 images of Mercury before ending its mission in 2015 with an intentional crash into the planet's surface. The probe's demise was inevitable, as Messenger had been orbiting Mercury since March 2011 and had run out of fuel. Right before impact, it sent back its final image, the highest resolution photo of Mercury. That's another damn question. How the hell, yeah, does it have so much fuel? Like, I know they're not small, they're big, they're very big. But like, how does it have enough fuel to come here, sort of t go around and take pictures? It's obviously got to travel from Earth to here in the first place. Like, I don't understand how it can have enough fuel. Like, is there like sort of technologies behind it? Like how to make your fuel last 
longer or is it like a different type of fuel or is it like run on like a mixture of solar energy and fuel or whatever i don't know but it is kind of crazy fuel. right before impact it sent back its final image the highest resolution photo of mercury ever captured you'd think that Very mercury hilarious. would be the hottest planet because it's the closest to the sun but our next planet is actually the hottest in the solar system the second planet from the sun and also earth's closest neighboring planet Venus has a thick atmosphere made up mostly of carbon dioxide, sulfur dioxide, and nitrogen gas, which traps the heat of the sun, making it a hellish world. Venera 13 was a probe built in the Soviet Union for the Venera program to explore Venus. It was the first lander to transmit color images from the surface of Venus. Venus is a hot world, with surface temperatures as high as 880 degrees Fahrenheit. The probe was designed Jeez. to only last 30 minutes, but it must have been built like a tank because it continued to transmit data and images for more than two hours after landing on March the 1st, 1982. NASA then sent the Magellan spacecraft to Venus in 1990 to image and map the entire surface. It sent back images of the planet's surface showing evidence of volcanism, tectonic plate movement, turbulent surface winds, and miles of lava channels including one measuring 5,550 miles long. What, a lava thing? A lava stream or whatever? Wait, what? Plate movement, turbulent surface winds, and miles of lava channels, including one measuring 5,550 miles long. Another incredible image of the volcano, Mat Mons, that rises three miles. Once Magellan was finished mapping the entire surface, it also ended its mission and crashed into the fiery they planet. The crash, I guess it's just safe because maybe if it goes into the solar system, there's a chance of it, I don't know, hitting something of ours. I don't know, maybe. The third rock from the sun, the Earth, is very unique and Come the on, only place the known to have life in the solar system. The there have been right. lots of amazing images yeah. taken of the planet. We Bro, I love, take, I, love take, I love taking pictures. I love taking pictures of the Earth, me. I love seeing pictures of the earth. It just it just sort of puts things into perspective. Like everything here, everything we do is here, man. Like how ridiculous is this man? Oh space is just brutal. We're so irrelevant. <laughs> just look at this, we're all here. And this is a tiny little dot in our solar system, let alone the whole fucking universe. We live on. But modern satellite photos are probably the most breathtaking. Like this image from NASA of the Earth as it looks right now. This amazing true color image was taken by NASA's moderate resolution imaging spectroradiometer. Look from at the sort of terrains, the, the um, detail and like the, is this, this is obviously North America, so South America. So this is like what, Mexico leading into the US? 22,000 miles above the Earth and shows North and South America oh, as they appear from orbit. The moon also making a guest appearance in the background. And on December the 14th, 2020, NASA captured a total solar eclipse with the GOES-16. That's quite amazing. But here is something you may not have seen. In March 2011, a Russian satellite named Electro-L captured incredibly detailed images of the Earth that appear to rival NASA images. Many claimed that they are more accurate and show different things, but NASA say they're not accurate. We're not sure. But which images do you think are the best? And by the way, remember the messenger spacecraft? It snapped a photo of the Earth and of the Moon and sent us a postcard before speeding towards Mercury. Wow, Mars has always crazy. been of great interest to humans. The fourth planet from the Sun, the Red Martian planet, has been studied heavily. The Viking Orbiter 1 took stunning snapshots of Mars in 1979, like this photo of the Valles Marineris. When was this made? Because obviously now we've had the footage from the Perseverance rover. Oh, is that, it's not actually that old, it's like five months old, four months old. And the Viking 2 orbiter snapped an image showing the southern polar plains and polar ice cap. In 2013, the Mars European Space Agency's Mars Express took highly detailed images of Hebes Chasma, the northernmost part of Valles Marineris, as seen in this movie created from the images. But since then, four rovers have already been on the planet's surface, studying and snapping photos. The images from the Mars Curiosity rover, including a selfie, were the most incredible images from the surface of an alien world.
This is a 1.8 billion panoramic view made up of over 1200 images of Mars as seen by Curiosity, which is still operational. Is it? What the, hell? the largest planet in our solar system, the gas giant Jupiter, has the most unique look of all the planets with its giant great red spot, a storm. It's a storm, isn't it? It's crazy how this is the constant storm there. On the planet that's been raging for 350 years and is so large it could swallow the Earth whole. On July 10th, 2017, the Juno spacecraft flew just 5,600 miles above the Great Red Spot and nabbed the closest image what of the massive. The fuck! Oh my days, that is unreal, man. Jupiter's one of those planets that is just. It's like all like learning about all planets is cool, but like Jupiter's just the one for me, man. Like it's so different. Like it's a gas planet, so obviously it is very different, but like. Just looking at these sort of pictures, I didn't even know there was pitch you could get these close to like these planets without like affecting the spacecrafts or whatever. But obviously you can. If storm Which ever taken. Crazy this me. image, a bit farther away, is a little bit truer in colour to what we would see if we were orbiting Jupiter. But Juno also captured unbelievable images of polar regions, which cannot be seen what? from Earth. And what surprised astronomers was that Jupiter's North Pole has eight storms swirling at its center. It and they're laid out in a precise geometric pattern, the storms appearing as stable fixtures in Jupiter's atmosphere and not normal weather. But more incredible photos would come. And on November the 13th, 2018, a new image from Juno was created using data from the JunoCam imager that's nothing short of breathtaking. And on June 27th, 2019, the Hubble telescope captured the planet's trademark great red spot. Bro, Jupiter is nuts. Jupiter is absolutely nuts. Look at all like, the different like colours and everything. Obviously, all planets have different colours, but there's some boring planets, and then there's planets like this. It's just unreal. Man. Which researchers say is shrinking. We got an awesome video coming up on Jupiter, so make sure not to miss it. As the number one contender for the most beautiful celestial body in the solar system, Saturn is hard to beat with its iconic rings. And probably the best images of Saturn to date come from the Cassini-Huygens spacecraft. On October 21st, 2002, the spacecraft was 177 million miles away from Saturn when it snapped this photo. And on March the 27th, 2004, as it got closer, took this natural- Bro, it looks so fake. Like, when something's so like, like, when something looks like this, it just looks fake. I mean, like a good video. Like, it's just, it's so like, my, um, what is the word like? It's so like surreal. It's so surreal. It just looks fake. This looks like it's computer generated, but again, I'm guessing it's not. I mean, based off the video, it's real, real images. It looks so like clean. The color image as it neared its arrival into Saturn's orbit. Now here's a mind-blowing image of Saturn you may never have seen before. This is Saturn backlit by the sun, and with that added light, Cassini was able to image the ring system oh, yeah, in a way yeah, yeah, not right. possible from Earth, and the result is stunning. Is but in 2004, true. the Hubble telescope was also in on the action and snapped an amazing photo of an aura. In 2016, the Cassini spacecraft sent back images of Saturn's northern hemisphere. What scientists were surprised to see was a hexagonal vortex storms. They've been studied, but no one's sure how this forms. On September the 15th, 2017, the spacecraft made its final approach towards the gas giant. And before again? sending this final image, burned up in Saturn's atmosphere like a meteor. Known as the sideways planet because it rotates on its side, the seventh planet from the sun. One of the best images taken, Voyager 2, made a flyby of the planet in 1999. And this image was taken using three color filters and on July the 11th and 12th, 2004, a composite image of Uranus obtained by the Keck telescope was published showing the icy cold world and its rings. Oh, wow. Those bright spots that you see on the surface of the planet are auras. In November of 2011, the Hubble telescope snapped an awesome image of Uranus and a colorized photo shows an icy blue sphere with red rings. And in what? 2017, the Hubble that's real. Oh my days. I didn't, I thought, again, I thought it was computer generated. These just don't look, they look so like, so, like they just don't look real. 
shows an icy blue sphere with red rings. And in 2017. It's so like blue, it's so like satisfyingly blue. Obviously you got the little white patch there, but yeah, Uranus is literally just, it's just, blue. It's just the same throughout the whole. The Hubble telescope captured auras again on Uranus. Neptune is the eighth planet in our solar system and the farthest away from the sun. The only spacecraft that's being close to Neptune is Voyager 2. One image taken by the spacecraft shows a giant storm raging on the surface of the planet, Neptune's storm, great dark spot. Before Voyager 2 would complete its mission and head towards interstellar space, it made a close approach and snapped this image, showing bright cloud streaks in Neptune's atmosphere. The Hubble telescope has taken a recent image of Neptune and in December 2020 snapped this image with the great dark spot. Because it's so far away from us, the best images we have of Neptune from Earth so far was taken by the European Southern Observatory's Very Large Telescope using a special narrow field adaptive optics mode of the multi-unit spectroscopic explorer instrument. Many argue whether Pluto is a planet or not, but you're here to see some photos. One of the clearest images of Pluto that you'll ever see was taken by the Long Range Reconnaissance Imager, Why which is, is aboard so NASA's New Horizons spacecraft on July the 13th, 2015. <laughs> but it wasn't done yet. Okay, and on the next day, like this image was put together by combining blue, red, and infrared images taken by the spacecraft. The New Horizons spacecraft continued to take crystal clear images of the planet. Pluto also has a moon called Charon, as seen in this composite of enhanced color images. And this image is the most striking, showing mountains across an icy plain. Oh, wow. Humanity has achieved great results getting new images from planets in our solar system and making incredible discoveries. We're still too far away to get close images of Proxima Centauri, the next planetary system to ours, and current spacecraft headed in that direction will take thousands of years to get there. But there oh, are man. plans to create a wafer thin. I feel like we're at the point in time where, like, there's going to be a huge sort of pause and like space exploring and we're just going to have a sort of a pause of like being able to find out different things and then probably as soon as I'm gone it's going to all speed up again and all these things are going to just speed up and we're going to find out everything that's my biggest fear just like no that's not my biggest fear it's a it's a worry though like something that I'm just sort of like deep down I just know I'm, I'll be guarded about if like when I pass it all starts getting discovered man I just want to. I want to be able to witness all these new things being found out. Whether like wh whether they can find out what black holes truly do. All these just all these things they can just explore new planets that we can maybe one day travel to. Just all these things. Thin nano probe called Breakthrough Starshot that has thin sails to capture energy from a powerful Earth-based laser. This would accelerate the probe at 134 million miles per hour, meaning the tiny probes could reach Proxima Centauri in 20 to 25 years. Wow. Just think of the images it could take. If that happens sometime soon, you'll see it here. Science is ridiculous, man. Science Our friends is ridiculous, how they can have a laser that just makes this thing go through space so damn quick. Let us be thankful for living in a century where we can explore the solar system as nobody has ever done before. Again, it's true, and maybe what I'm saying is just completely false, but I've just got the worry, like, we just hold it now, and then it's just going to, again, advance as soon as my time's gone, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe we're now in a point where we're just gonna go nuts in finding out new things about space. With Elon Musk doing what he does, with NASA doing what they do, everything about space is also mysterious and terrifying, and I love it. Imagine having photos like that and people still believe that Earth's flat. 153 Disney is getting crazy with these hidden Mickeys. 200,000 dim- <laughs> Fuck's sake. <laughs> I hate that comment so much. I'm grateful that I was born in a time to witness and admire these transcendent photographs that our ancestors never got to appreciate. It's up to the future generations to actually explore these celestial bodies physically. Yeah, I mean, I guess that's it. We can sort of get these pictures, but then it's the next generation's time to find out what these pictures, like what um, these planets are like to sort of set a foot on and stuff. Obviously, not all of them are possible. I don't even know if it'd be possible to go to any of them, but just like explore with more detail came to the comments to see if there's are comments about uranus i was not disappointed great video i ain't seen one but hopefully you enjoyed this video and like i said please suggest some more space reactions i just love space whatever it is it's just fun it's just intriguing it's just nice to learn about it's just scary it's just everything in one but 
yeah, hopefully you enjoyed. Hopefully you're not put off because it's been a long time since I last on the space reaction. But yeah, until next time, like, subscribe. Peace.